Drivers, start your engines. This is MRN Motorsports Monday. One full hour of news, interviews, and opinion about the past weekend's racing action. Okay, hey, start turning off. Be ready. Now here's your hosts, Woody Kane and Joy Meyer. Green flag, green flag. And then there were 12. Harvick dominates at Dover, while Jimmy Johnson is among those eliminated. In the Xfinity Series, Regan Smith wins for the second time this season, but his crew chief gets no love afterward. We'll talk more about that later on. And in the Camping World Truck Series at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, John West Townley gets his first victory after 87 tries. He's going to be along on the program a little bit later on to tell us all about it. I'm Woody Kane, joined by two-spotter Joey Meyer as we move to the contender round in the chase. And boy, what drama we had. Jimmy Johnson, six-time champion, trying to go for a seventh. Did not wait a minute. You are Woody Kane. I am. Okay. I, I don't I don't know if you are or not. Okay. Really? Is uh, that where you're gonna go? Okay. Right. right. We'll bring the real me along later on. Okay. Okay. We uh, do have some check. video about that later, so stick around. Check your ID. Yeah. Yeah. I got it right here in my pocket. Six-time champion, parts failure, sent him out of the race early. Um, unbelievable. Before the race started, the two contenders that were. Uh, on the outside looking in were last year's champion with Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch, who had missed 11 races. Uh, the only way Kevin was going to get in and make it through the next round was to win the race. Well, Kyle, he could have mathematically done it, but it would have been very, very, very difficult. difficult. Yeah. Kyle was going to race his way in by finishing second or third. But what a lot of the competitors wanted to see was Kyle win the race so essentially, Kevin wouldn't have been able to, and then mm -hmm. everybody would have breathed a sigh of relief because right the now the former champion is gone. Then exactly at that point. right. But right now, the biggest horsepower in the garage—not just horsepower mentality, but the strongest contender in that garage—is the four car, and he showed exactly why those guys are made uh, with ice in their veins. Him and Rodney Childers, uh, and later on, we'll talk to Tim Fedewa here on the show. Uh, they were cool, calm, and collect, and they drove to the front. First 10 or 15 laps, we started the race, of course, uh, with qualifying rained out mm -hmm. by points. He started 15th and was in the top two, three cars within 10 laps and was leading the race the rest of the afternoon. The only time he didn't lead the race was to a pit sequences when guys took a little bit of opportunities to take two or stay out. Uh, the, the clearly the dominant car uh, and, and tamed monster, the miles the monster here for the weekend at Dover. We've seen dominance like this before with Jimmy Johnson, uh, mm -hmm. so it's not unheard of. But it definitely, for those guys, was uh, clearly a dominant afternoon. Absolutely, it was. Kevin Harvick's 31st career win and his 531st start. His last win was at Phoenix last year, ironically, in another must-win situation along the way. Third win in his last five chase races moves him on to round two. Ninth total career win in the chase, and only his third win of 2015. They've been very, very quickly, but our Kevin Harvick spoke to Winston Kelly in victory lane. Kevin Harvick, another dominant performance. Where does this win stack up with all the big ones? You seem like that guy that if we were talking about basketball, give me the ball, you had the ball, take us through today and everything that went on. Well, I'm not the only one that wants the ball. I think all these guys thrive uh, in, in these moments and, and do such a, such a great job week in and week out. Um, it almost just felt not right, you know, where we were after the first two weeks and, and to come in here with the – attitude that, that that really that we have every week and, and just uh, be that more detailed and, and that more on top of everything that we're doing is is something that's special so just really proud it's not it's not me I get I get to ride this thing and, and hopefully not screw it up and, and those guys over there and back at Stuart Haas Racing are the ones who make all this go around all right you had two fast race cars and then issues and a dominant car today what does that say about your chances in the next seven races well I don't really know you know I think we just we're just going to go out and race and and um you know, the, after the first two races, uh, I don't even want to say anything about anything. I just want to go to the racetrack and, and do our thing. Enjoy another one. Thank you. Did I say our Kevin Harvick? I meant our Winston Kelly spoke with Kevin Harvick, who's the defending champ and has been in these situations before. Remember, he opened up with Media Day at Chicago saying, we're going we're gonna to put it to those guys over at Gibbs Racing. And then just by the hair of his chinny chin chin makes it. And it just goes to show you, uh, you can be good all you want. You can be very fast, but it's fragile. Look at Jimmy Johnson, a part, uh, a part that almost never has any problems, a, a very inexpensive part, costs him the opportunity to move on. Yeah, some will say that that missing going from the challenger to, to the contender round 
might be more difficult than making it to Homestead and not winning the championship. Mm -hmm. Because now for the next seven races, you have to see your competitors continually compete for a championship, and you have to watch it. Whereas if you lose Homestead and you don't win the championship and you finish second, third, or fourth, you take the offseason and rebuild for 2016. But now we have to go to Charlotte, which is our home track, and Jimmy Johnson. They still can race for fifth. They can. Fifth in points, and I clearly think they're going to do that. Uh, I think they're going to show some dominance. Those guys have been running good all year long. Um, from a Hedrick standpoint, we still have the two cars with the 24 and the 88 You know, in the chase. Uh, I still think the 48 is going to speak up a little bit. As we did back in 2013, we were able to win Charlotte by not making the chase, but we were able to yeah. compete at, at a higher level. And that's level. where all the fisticuffs came out last year <laughs> yeah. as well, right? Yeah, and uh, it started at Charlotte. Yeah, it it carried carried through to Texas and Phoenix. Uh, we've seen some stuff with uh, some other drivers as well. So it's still still a long season, uh, a nerve wracking race of 400 laps. Uh, I talked to Timmy earlier. When, uh, yeah, now wait a minute. Race. Tell the folks who that is. Fedua. Tim Fedua is a spotter for the four car. Uh, we we talked, and uh, he's like, it was the longest 400 laps of his life <laughs> because they knew essentially, yeah, there were some obstacle or, or some categories where they could have gotten in by points, mm-hmm. but it was so calculated, worrying about what other drivers were. They knew they controlled their destiny by winning the race, and they did. It seems odd to say that. The easier path was to win the race <laughs> rather than worrying about all that other math. It kind of makes your head hurt thinking about it's it. exactly right. Yeah. I mean, Dale Jr. and Jeremy McMurray tied for the same number of points and had to fall back on the next category to move Which Dale was Jr. position in, in the, the race at Dover. Exactly Wow, right. and he wins by one spot. By one Absolutely. spot with the same number of points. Yeah. Uh, so, so it was an intriguing, intriguing race. Uh, it, I can't say it was the greatest race because, again, Kevin was so fast. Mm-hmm. But being able to keep up with all those other little races in the thing, we only made it in by two points. Right, and you we're know, racing hard with uh, Kurt Busch down the stretch. Kurt Busch, we had you know four. Uh, Ryan Newman was behind us, so we had a lot of points chase guys right around us. Uh, so it was it was a very difficult day for us. Uh, we held on and, and essentially starts over now when we go to Charlotte. It does. You mentioned Jimmy Johnson, the six-time champion, looking for that seventh that would tie him with the King Richard Petty and Dale Earnhardt did not advance and he spoke with MRN after the race. No, definitely disappointed. It's tough having um, a very inexpensive axle seal be the culprit and uh, take your championship hopes away. So uh, it's racing. I've had mechanicals take me out of championships growing up. Um, they've led to some success for myself and I'm sure helped me with the championship or two and it's just part of racing. Um, it just shows how critical every um, thing is on a race team and how important every component is and you can't take anything for granted. So um, heartbreaking for sure, but I mean, I don't know what else we can do about it. We just got to go on and try to win races uh, and close out the season strong. Classy uh, talk by Jimmy Johnson there. He did the same thing with TV. I mean, a guy who's been there, done that before, and no uh, arm waving or pointing fingers at different guys takes it in stride. And I guess that's the mark of a guy who's been there before. We've talked about it 100 times, uh, 101 times now on this <laughs> show about it being a team sport. And we mm-hmm. see team, it's not only people and personnel, but parts. Everything has to work in unison. Mm -hmm. Uh, We've seen Jimmy Johnson celebrate when he's been victorious, but a lot of drivers can take note of how he responds uh, in the downside. Mm -hmm. Very, very classy interview. Uh, Him and McMurray did after missing the chase. Did really good interviews. Uh, Being in the sport for a long time, representing it well, on the downside, uh, not exactly where he wanted to be. We'll talk a little bit more later on in the program about that battle between Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jamie McMurray because that was critical to who moves on in the chase and who doesn't. Also, we'll have John West Townley on. He was the guy who got his first win of the Camping World Truck Series out at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. And we'll have Tim Fidua coming along as well, the spotter for Kevin Harvick after yesterday's big win at Dover. We'll also have our on-track, off-track segment coming up. You won't believe what Joey's going to talk about in that segment as well. Also, we'll talk about that situation after the Xfinity race at Dover in which an imposter somehow misrepresented himself or represented himself as Regan Smith's crew chief. We'll show you a little video snippet of all that that happened on the weekend. It's all ahead on Motorsports Monday, and we'll be taking your Twitter questions as well. Mine is at WYKane. Joey's is at 2, the number 2 spotter or at MRN Radio and use the hashtag AskMRN so we can find your question. All that's ahead on the program. Stick around, everybody. This is MRN Motorsports Monday. Dale Jr. here. I wear Wrangler Advanced Comfort Jeans for any occasion. With new styles and great fits, you'll look good and feel comfortable anytime, anywhere. Wrangler Advanced Comfort Jeans are built with a U-shaped construction, so they give you more room where you need it. And their four-way flex technology moves with you for all-day comfort. In the garage or out and about, 
Wrangler knows the ins and outs of comfort. Wrangler, real comfortable jeans. Race fans, NASCAR returns to Kansas Speedway Sunday, October 18th. It's the fifth race in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. NASCAR's finest are all in, including Jeff Gordon in his final full-time season race at Kansas. And Jeff Gordon is right where he needs to be. Park free, coolers welcome. Tickets for the Hollywood Casino 400 Sprint Cup Series race, $99 or less. Kids tickets, just $29 at 866-460-RACE or kansasspeedway.com. Hey, I'm Joey Logano. Now back to Joey Meyer and Woody Kane on Motorsports Monday. How does Joey Meyer have a radio show? <laughs> Trying to do it again. When the chips are down, Kevin Harvick pushes all in and trying to go on and get the win here at Dover. Kevin Harvick up by two and a half seconds over Kyle Busch. He'll bring his car to the bottom of the racetrack. Now gets the launch onto the back straightaway. He had to win to move on. He'll do exactly that in a walk-off here at the Monster Mile. This team's back was against the wall coming in. They had to win to move on. They've done just that. Kevin Harvick and Stuart Haas Racing wins at Dover in the AAA 400. They move on to contend for the championship. <laughs> There you go, boy, if you can only hear what goes on behind the scenes when you guys are listening to those clips. Anyway, the front room would fill up with lawyers, and we don't want to go there. But a dominant win by Kevin Harvick led all but 45 of the 400 laps at the Monster Mile. No small feat indeed. And joining us on the guest line now is the man who helped get him there. Tim Fita was up on the roof spotting for Kevin. Tim, welcome back to the program, man. Congratulations. Well, it's glad to be here. Well, I think it's been, it's been since March, so uh, <laughs> we're happy to, happy to be here for sure. Tell us about the way your day went yesterday because you guys just came out right away with, uh, with uh, boy, hair on fire, I guess you could say, and uh, seized that race by the throat, so to speak. Yeah, you know, I mean, we knew we had a, a good car. I was a little concerned. There's, you know, there's probably four other teams I was worried about going in. And, you know, it's just 400 miles at Dover, and pretty green track. And, you know, I, I, you know, when Kevin on that initial start, he, I don't know how many cars he passed right away on the outside. And, I think by the break, by the uh, competition caution, we were fourth or something like that. And I, I thought, well, you know, as long as everything keeps going this way, we're going to have a great day. And uh, But, you know, we I thought to myself, too, that by lap 200 when the track rubbers up, the place changes a lot. I, you know, a lot goes through your mind. Uh, but you could definitely tell Kevin was determined uh, from the green flag. And I, you know, I talked about it with a few people beforehand that just, Kind of let Kevin do his thing. I knew he was inspired. I knew we had a good car, Rodney, and the guys prepare a great car every week. And uh, we kind of felt Dover owed us a couple, and uh, we knew if we played our cards right, we could uh, we could do our jobs. Yeah, they were second back there earlier this year as well, so you've obviously got your way around there pretty good. Yeah, exactly. Uh, starting out the 2015 series as a defending champion, you run off two second-place finishes. You run two wins and another second-place but then you have this stretch of finishes, either really good or kind of mediocre and a couple of crashes. Did the, sol the, the, the solid nature of this team from the end of last year having to win two races to simply win the championship, did it get you through those stretches where you couldn't find victory lane? I think so, Joey. I mean, you know, we, we always, you know, believe in ourselves and we always definitely, you know, believe in Kevin. He is a you know, we call him the honey badger. He is a, he's a tough cookie, man. He's a, he's impressive to watch. I mean, I, I've known him for a long time, raced with him, and it, he just never ceases to amaze me. You know, when you got a guy like that behind the wheel, um, and he's in, with this team, um, nothing's impossible, and, and we truly believe that. So I think the ups and downs and, and last year having to win, you know, having our backs against the wall like we did yesterday kind of prepared us for yesterday. So um, you just take your experience and, you know, we were all nervous, but we were all, you know, there was a calmness to us as well. I think going into yesterday, it was, it was kind of weird, you know. It's just we were prepared for the worst but hoping for the best. Yeah, that's ab absolutely the way you got to look at it. Did, chatting with Tim Fedewa, who's the spotter for Kevin Harvick, yesterday's winner at Dover, they move on to the contender round now with 11 other drivers into the next round of the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. But with all the weather situation coming into the weekend and all the practice time and qualifying got lost, were you guys concerned at all in terms of how might the car perform? I mean, obviously you had been very good there in the past, but not having that track time, did it make you a little bit nervous or worried about, my gosh, what do we have? 
Yeah, I think, you know, if we wouldn't have had any practice for sure because these things are so, you know, you get them down on the splitter or something and, you know, you just it's going to be a long day. And so we, luckily, we had a, a couple of short practices and um, that was all we really needed to get the car dialed in. But like I said, I was worried about the track going from not much rubber to uh, getting rubbered up. That was, you know, my biggest concern. I, I can't speak for Rodney, but, um, you know, I, I I just knew if we got Kevin in the ballpark, he was going to handle it. I had, I had to, just had that feeling. I've uh, seen that look in his eye before. <laughs> I and, bet you uh, have. It's, 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 you know, I, and there's, there's, you know, quite a few of the drivers that do that when they, when they put their mind to it, you know, and they got a good car. Um, magic happens. Well, standing on the roof and watching, we had a struggling day over in the two car. Uh, I got to watch you pass us a couple times under a green flag. Unfortunately, did you have any problems? Did you guys fight any issues at all during the day? No, I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> we had a, a vibration once, and uh, he mentioned it, and that, that was it. It, it. We got a yellow and changed tires, and, you know, the, I guess the biggest thing, we, we put two on late, and, uh, you know, Kyle and a lot of the other guys uh, had four, and, I, you know, you, you think, well, um, you know, is this going to be our uh, something that gets us later? But, you know, the car was just so strong, and, and uh, you know, we had great restarts something we, we've been working on as a team and Kevin's been working on and you know it it, uh, it just everything fell our way yesterday Julie. Tell us a little bit about the way things have been around the shop over the past couple of weeks Tim because you know you guys had some issues at Chicagoland getting together with Jimmy Johnson then you had the fuel problem the next week at New Hampshire and then you come in here uh, you could have done it without winning but we were just talking before you came on it seemed like the easier path without having to worry about all the numbers was just to go out and get that victory what was the mindset like in the shop I mean you guys are the defending champs and next thing you know a couple of bad uh, bad breaks and you're behind the eight ball a little bit. Well, I think, you know, after Chicago, you know, for the first couple of days, we were kind of in shock. I mean, just to, you know, think about what could happen and what we should have done and could have done and didn't do. And, you know, there there were so many things that happened there in uh, just a, a couple laps, you know, um, from rubbing with Jimmy and the tire smoke. And, you know, I think it's going away. It looks good, you know, and it, just a lot of stuff went through our minds. So then when we, when we blew the tire and wrecked it, next couple of days we just you know we knew from that point on we were going to have to win one of the next two and uh i think that was just the mindset was you know go to new hampshire we run good there um and then we you know we had a problem with air in the fuel cell i think and just didn't get it full enough um and and ran out you know being a dominant car and, um so it was, it was just kind of you know i think no one was down um we were, you know, quietly confident, I think, going into Dover. I mean, we just, we knew if we did our best and uh, if we didn't get it done, we were still going to hold our heads high and try to win some more races here at the end of the year. Yeah, I got Tim Fito on the on the chat line here with us. Uh, appreciate you joining us. So you, the defending championship spotter from 2014, it's always a cool title to hang around your neck. But now once you win one, you always want another one. Are there more pressure involved? Do you feel more pressure trying to get that second championship than you did for the first one? I don't know, Joe. I think I think I feel about the same personally. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't think it's any different. I I think uh, you know now that we we want to race in the chase. You know, like I said, it's been since I think Vegas or Phoenix. I can't remember which come first that, since we won, but uh, it feels good to have some momentum and and. and uh, you couldn't come at a better time, you know. Uh, but we got, you know, we tested Kansas. We go to Charlotte where we won last year. Um, I, I feel good about it, but this chase is, is definitely different than uh, anything I've ever experienced as far as, as racing goes. I mean, you really have to be on your game, and so many things have to go right. You know, I look look back on how we won it, and uh, it's just amazing how we, we got there. And uh, whoever, hopefully it's us, but whoever wins it this year, uh, it's going to be the same way. It's, it's a lot of circumstances that have to come together. So it's a nerve-wracking deal for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, being good is, is not enough. you got to have some breaks along the way as well. Uh, but, Tim, give us an idea. Give the folks uh, an idea of what kinds of stuff uh, Kevin wants you to talk to him about when he's behind the wheel, when he's in the middle of a race. Joey's talked about what Brad likes and doesn't like. What does Kevin want you to tell him? What kinds of stuff is he looking for from you? You know, I think just reminders on, on – 
you know, pit road when we switches and gear fans at restarts. And I mean, just, you know, I don't have to spot out the back a whole lot for Kevin. Um, he's, he's pretty easy to be honest with you. Um, we, you know, we try not to say a lot, but, uh, um, I think the biggest thing, he just wants to be informed. Uh, there's a lot going on and, and, you know, me and Rodney talk on channel two and, uh, I relay a lot of stuff, um, through Rodney to him and uh, vice versa. So, um, but really Kevin's, you know, he's a wily veteran and, uh, I really, if I wasn't up there, it probably wouldn't make a whole lot of difference with him. He's, he's just been that good, uh, the last two years since I've been working with him and, uh, it's it's truly been a lot of fun. Now wait a minute, Joey's been telling me for years the spotter's the main guy. What's what's this about? You're you're breaking well, ranks here. I'd Come like on. To say that, uh, yeah, for uh, I like to have the income for sure of getting paid by Stuart Haas, but um, man, you know his driver included. You know Brad the same way. I think they're so keyed in and they're so good at what they do. Um, you know it, it's all a team effort and every little piece helps, but. Uh, when they get behind the wheel and they, they got a good car, they can surely get it done. So the challenger round is behind us. We have seven races to go with three more three-round segments. Do you take those races together as a group of three? Do you take them individually, or do you try to look even further beyond that? Uh, Joe, I think we take one race at a time. We, we kind of learned our lesson at Chicago. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember last year going into Chicago, and our mindset was just had a solid day, you know. And I think maybe, and I, I'm speaking for myself and not for Rodney or, or Kevin, but you know, I think maybe we, you know, going into Chicago, we were just, you know, I think we wanted to win it. And, mm-hmm. and that was our, you know, our big picture that day. And um, looking back, you know, and, and now we get a second chance. I think, I say conservative, we're still going to try to win it. But um, I think we're going to, you know, be a little more guarded and, and just try to get through there. And uh, just try to get some momentum going and, and keep the points up. And I think if you have solid runs, you don't have to win. Uh, Talladega is going to be the crazy one, of course. <laughs> yeah. It would be nice to get a win before we go to Talladega. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he went through that last year. Yes. They had to. Boy, that was tough. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We, we stood yeah. by each other next last year at Talladega. Yeah. Uh, we had to win. Kevin, I believe, finished third or fourth right behind us. And, you know, he saw the elation in my face like I saw the elation in his face yeah. yesterday, knowing. <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. What a feeling of relief for sure. Well, we had won Charlotte, so I think we were in it. We were in Tal- for Tal. So we went to Talladega. I went there. You know, that was about the nicest feeling in the world as a spotter because that's our toughest track. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we didn't have no pressure, but Joey was looking like I was looking yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> a little yeah. green around the gills, but that's all yeah. right. It all came out well in the end. Well, Tim, congratulations to you and the team. Another big win, and now moving on to the contender round. Look forward to catching up with you guys at Charlotte this weekend. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate you having me on. Congrats, Congrats Tim. How about that? Uh, boy, that's, that's to me what makes the chase so cool is not just one big moment at the end or not you know the drip, drip, drip of accumulation, but you have these – these elimination races where it, it's everything is on the line and you feel it like at the end of a basketball or a football game, and I think that's really cool. Oh, the intensity is ratcheted up to a level that we haven't seen since the creation of this new Chase Contender Challenger Eliminator rounds mm-hmm. uh, because the intensity, you know, when you're – it used to be if you weren't winning the race, you're okay, okay, I'm having a good points day. Well, now it's irrelevant of your points day. It's the people around you in the chase that you're racing. Mm-hmm. For instance, we were 16th. We were ahead of – two points ahead of falling out, we were worried about the cars that were behind us, keeping them behind us, gaining that one point. Uh, Yeah, you want to have a good points day, but it's all relative. McMurray had a much better points day than us. Mm -hmm. Dale Jr. had one spot better than him. That was the tiebreaker. And that was the tiebreaker. So it's all – it's these little – it's like a mini series inside of a mini series. Mm-hmm. It's like soap operas inside of soap operas yeah. that you you spend all race long nerve wracking. I'm sitting there on a on a fan vision, looking at points, seeing where we are, um, trying my best. I don't want to tell Brad, hey, we need two points. Yeah. 
but through my inflection of my voice, I'm pretty sure he understood we had to get by some people. Yeah, Joey gets up here when he gets really <laughs> tight. So. Yeah, yeah <laughs> my, my emotions are right here. The little guy like Miles rides right on my shoulder. Up right? on the sleeve the yes, whole time. Yes. All right, that's the Sprint Cup Series. We've got a little bit more to tell you about that later on, including uh, Jamie McMurray and Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s battle to see who was going to advance. We'll t- talk about that a little bit later on. Also have uh, on track, off track coming up. That clip we were telling you about, about the uh, the fake crew chief coming in at Dover. And next, we'll talk some truck racing. A first-time winner in the Camping World Truck Series, John West Townley joins us on the other side. This is MRN Motorsports Monday. The road to victory lane isn't just for drivers anymore. Introducing the official daily fantasy game of NASCAR at DraftKings.com, America's favorite daily fantasy sports site. Just pick a team of five drivers and stay under the salary cap. Outscore your opponents and win. Hurry to DraftKings.com now and use promo code COAST to play for free. You could win part of the $1 billion in prizes being awarded this year. Enter COAST to play for free now at DraftKings.com. That's DraftKings.com. Freightliner Trucks, the official hauler of NASCAR, knows race cars are finely tuned for maximum performance, taking into account track conditions and the competition. Well, Freightliner builds vehicles that are finely tuned to lower your real cost of ownership, taking into account your bottom line. Efficient, aerodynamic designs paired with integrated powertrains, built to maximize fuel economy gives truckers peace of mind and a better return on investment. For more information, visit FreightlinerTrucks.com. Freightliner Trucks, run smart. Hey, I'm Ryan Newman. Now back to Joey Meyer and Woody Kane on Motorsports Monday. White flag is in the air. One lap to go. John West Townley's the race leader, but coasting to turn one for the final time. Townley crawling down to the bottom of the racetrack, hugging the bottom white line. It's going to take forever in his eyes to get back around this racetrack. He clears off turn number two, sputtering that Zaxby's machine midpoint down the back straightaway. And Eric Jones was in the second spot. He may be out of fuel as well or slowing there in turn number two. So Townley comfortable now in turn number three, slowly around the bottom part of the racetrack looking for his first career NASCAR Camping World Truck Series win. Here comes John West Townley, certainly at a lot slower speed than we've ever seen at Las Vegas. Off of turn four, John West Townley takes the checkered flag. John West Townley wins the Rhino Linings 350 at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. His first win in his NASCAR Camping World Truck Series career. Let's go down to pit road. There you go. Athenian Motorsports gets their first victory. The Zaxby's Chevrolet with John West Townley behind the wheel goes to victory lane for the first time. John West, welcome to the program, man, and congratulations. That had to be nerve-wracking at the end. It was, man. I was just reliving it there. That's uh, <laughs> it's, it's awesome. Um, but, yeah, those last five laps are, were definitely some of the, the most uh, hardest laps I've ever, I've ever ran in races. Yeah. When, when you show up for Vegas, it's kind of a condensed schedule. Uh, personally, a huge favorite of it, uh, almost all one day. Uh, what issues did you have any in practice? Qualifying turned out rather well. Uh, what did you think about going into the race from a performance standpoint? Well, you know, in practice, uh, we, we actually uh, we struggled a little bit for a while uh, trying to get uh, the, the truck to handle over the bumps and I wanted to, but, um, um, you know, my crew chief, Michael Shelton, and uh, my engineer uh, Troy, uh, they uh, we uh, pulled something together and uh, got that thing handled a lot better. And got a qualify on the on the front row, um, and uh, at that point, you know, I was really excited. I mean, I knew we had a great truck. I knew it was just going to be a matter of uh, biding our time. But uh, I guess in the last thirty laps, of uh, you know, Matt Craft and he was pulling away and. Uh, we started to catch him a little bit, but every time I got close to him, I remember the my truck would get um, pretty pretty loose or uh, pretty tight, um, depending on uh, how I was approaching it, approaching him that particular corner. Um, but uh, fortunately, uh, you know, within the closing laps, I believe he ran out of fuel, and uh, and uh, what a what an exciting uh, finish! It was, it was awesome. Yeah, and give folks an idea of when when you and the crew realized, oh my gosh, this thing's going to turn into a fuel mileage race, and we're going to have to save some. Um, well, as a team, we kind of we knew we were going to have plenty of fuel out there at the last stop that we made, but with everybody else running out of fuel, uh, 
it, it, it's a little, a little unnerving, even, even though like we were a lap and a half to the to the good. So, or at least you thought uh, so. <laughs> that's yeah. That's what uh, that's what our engineer uh, was predicting. But we recognized that. It, I mean, that, that I, I just had quite like well, so much of a lead, um, hmm. uh, given the fact that there were some trucks behind me running out of gas as well. So. I, I guess I mean I didn't know any of this at the time though. All I knew was that you know there's a chance uh, I might be running out of fuel. I didn't know we're a lap and a half to the good. So um, you know, thank goodness to my spotter. I mean, just was was uh, coached me through the whole thing. Terry Cook uh, just 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 save fuel, save fuel, and come completely out of the gas and one and two, um, three quarter throttle down the straightaways, um, completely out of the gas in three and four. So uh, some of the slowest, most nerve-wracking laps there uh, after uh, crashing and pulled off. But I'm glad it worked out. I mean, that was uh, that was awesome. I mean, when when you get in a situation like that and you go, they they weren't telling you all this stuff. Do you go, come on, why didn't you tell me that, guys? Or were you glad they didn't tell you everything? Well, I mean, what it was over with. I mean, I, I guess uh, I, I guess I was uh, I, I guess I kind of had mixed feelings about it. But I mean, you know. At the end of the day, um, I got the information that I needed. I mean, to 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 go out there and uh, and, and finish it up. But I mean, yeah, I guess it would have given me a little bit more peace of mind uh, to know that we were uh, like according to calculations, lap and a half to the good. But uh, there's been a time before to where I've, I've had that information, a lap and a half to the good, and then I kept running it and I ran out of gas. So I think uh, I think it was definitely the right move. Um, and, uh, you know, Terry Cook just did a great job of coaching me through that and, uh, getting to the end there. Cause I probably, uh, I've got a very heavy foot and <laughs> probably there's a chance I could have ran a solid guy. Most drivers do, right? Yeah. <laughs> we've got the pleasure of having first time winner from Vegas in the Zaxby's, uh, truck, uh, John West Townley sitting top 10 in the points. You're associated with a team that is in their first full year. Not really their first year of activity, but their first full year. We have a couple of weeks off now before we hit it hard again and finish up the 2015 season. You get to take a step back, take a breather, get ready for these next four races. Evaluate your team in the season. Where are you at so far? Where do you feel you're at? Well, um, you know, we uh, we fell back in points just a little bit in, in the last, uh, well, uh, minus Vegas, uh, a few races back. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know, I think uh, we just had some bad luck there, and uh, I mean, this we I definitely turned it around. Uh, I mean, the, the whole team turned it around back in Vegas, and uh, you know, I guess the goal would would be to uh, possibly uh, you know crack off a few more um, positions in the points, maybe move back up to the fifth. I mean, I know it, it might be it might be a bit of a tall order. Uh, but uh, I would say it's doable, and, and and that's kind of our goals right now. I mean, would love to get another win uh, coming up here at Talladega, but that place uh, can, can be kind of a roll of the dice. So we'll yeah. Have to see. <laughs> yeah, you have an association with Hendrick Motorsports uh, in their engine program. What else does your team need to take that next step to go from that you know fifth to tenth place truck into the top five? Um, well, I mean, I think we just need good, consistent runs. I mean, good top five finishes for the rest of the season. If not, you know, you know, and I definitely, I want to get some more wins. I mean, I've had my first, uh, the, the, the second one. Um, uh, it's right around the corner. I can feel it. Just gotta, gotta keep driving forward. Um, but definitely, you know, the Hendrick, Hendrick horsepower has really, really helped me this year. Um, I mean, they've given me, they've given us, Quite a bit of support. Can't thank them enough. And uh, of course, Zaxby's. You know, they've hung with me all these years, and uh, made one of my dreams come true here. Man, absolutely. That's really cool to see along the way. I saw earlier where you guys had decided to scale back on the Xfinity Series side a little bit to focus on the Truck Series, and then in the first race it paid off. But what led to that decision?
Absolutely. Well, John West, congratulations on a big win there for the first for Athenian Motorsports, getting uh, the Zaxby's uh, Silverado into victory lane as well at Las Vegas. Congratulations. Just a, a dream weekend for you guys, I'm sure. Absolutely, man. Thank you. I there appreciate you it. Thanks for having me on. Congrats, Congrats, John. How about that? It's so cool to see. And we've seen it a few times this year. Guys who you've seen climb that ladder a little bit and then finally get that, that breakthrough win, those are just the stories that, that, that make it cool in the sport. It's the reason we race. It's the yeah. reason what you do. When you leave the shop on Thursday and drive, fly, walk, however you get to the next racetrack, it's what – when you drive through that tunnel, you don't go through and go – I want to finish sixth. <laughs> You've I, never I, done that? Nope. I think I want to wreck. No. I, you know, no, you never you one. never do. Every yeah. driver in the garage blown loads their stuff, pushes and works their guts out to try to get in victory lane. John West townley has been doing it a number of years. Been the butt of many jokes because mm -hmm. he's been he's always on the edge. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he wants to go faster. Right. If he slowed down, he'd never wreck. Right? But that's easy. Anybody, anybody can just, can ride slow. Anybody yeah. can do that, okay? So you continually strive and get harder and get better and better and better, and he has. He has his spotter, Terry Cook, who used to drive yep. uh, a Wilder truck. I actually got the spot for Terry Cook. It shows you how the, the wow. world of spotters. Yeah, we've won together, Terry Cook and I, who used to drive for Brad's family's truck. Wow. How's that for a— It's a small world, yeah, the isn't Kevin, it? Yeah, the six stages of Kevin yeah. Bacon. How far okay. can you go? So for him, to are you are you are you setting up the six degrees of Joey Meyer? <laughs> yeah, <here? laughs> exactly. Is. That's exactly right. Oh, that's so, bad. So for that uh, evolvement to come around and to finally have a team that's been pursuing a goal for so long, mm -hmm. break through. And it wasn't like he just led those laps. He led the second most laps of the race. Yes, his Qualified truck second. was second. Yeah, exactly right. They had a good truck. Mm -hmm. uh, their strategy wasn't to go out and say, well, we're going to try to win this race on fuel strategy. He was running second yeah. when the leader and defending champ ran out of gas. Well, he had to go pit. Yeah. Exactly yeah. right. So they had a good truck. Good kudos to them. And, um, you know, if they can keep the truck in, in one piece and Terry Cook and keep it under him uh, by keeping John West calm, mm -hmm. they'll beat in victory lane more times. They will, indeed. And we've got a real great finish coming up here in the Camping World Truck Series. Eric Jones, the rookie, continues to lead. He's four points Ahead of Matt Kraft and Tyler Reddick is in third, 16 points back, and then a little bit further back to Johnny Sauter in fourth, Daniel Hemrick in fifth. Uh, those guys, the top five as we head down the stretch. You can see the stats there on the screen. We do need to, before we get done with the truck series, get you to give us an update on Austin Terrio because he had a scary crash there. Yeah, real scary crash with Austin Terrio in the Brad Keselowski number 29, Cooper Standard Ford. We brought him home. He was uh, checked out of the hospital. Uh, flew home last night. We were able to bring him home back into Statesville, him and his family. Uh, he's sore. He's beat up. Uh, he's on the recovery. He's on the men's. Uh, no serious injuries. He's got a small lower back uh, issue that they're dealing with uh, in Mooresville today with just some follow-up. Uh, but I would say four to five weeks. Uh, he's already walking around. Everything is good spirits. And uh, eager to get back in the he, truck. <laughs> exactly. He's already talking about what race he's going to be back at. Yeah. But uh, just sore overall, bad, bad hit uh, there in Las Vegas, which, again, we'll talk about here in a little bit why it was that bad. All right. We've got a lot more to come here on Motorsports Monday. On track, off track is around the corner. We're already getting your Twitter questions. Use those uh, with the hashtag AskMRN, at MRN Radio, or mine is at WI Canes. Joey's is at Two spotter, the number two spotter. We'll get to your questions on track, off track, and the crew chief imposter story. All that is next. This is MRN Motorsports Monday. Are you ready? To help children forget about their serious medical conditions so they can just be a kid. Yeah! Then support Victory Junction, which is the dream of late race driver Adam Petty, who wanted to build a camp where children concentrate on fun and laughter, not illness or disability. At Victory Junction, kids enjoy zip lining, horseback riding, swimming, fishing, all in a medically safe environment, all at no cost to the camper. What do you say, Richard Petty? Let's do this. Learn more at VictoryJunction.org. Looking for a great spot for an affordable beach vacation or the perfect romantic retreat? Let the Plaza Resort and Spa help. A vacation on the world's most famous beach is sure to help you reconnect with the ones you love. Discover the grand tradition of hospitality and service on Daytona Beach. The Plaza Resort and Spa is the perfect choice for any type of getaway. Book online at plazaresortandspa.com or call 1-855-DB-PLAZA. That's 1-855-327-5292. Hey, I'm Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Now back to Joey Meyer and Woody Kane on Motorsports Monday.
The white flag flying at the start finish line. One more lap to go for Regan Smith. His advantage over Denny Hamlin, one second. Back into turns one and two. Here's Regan Smith. He'll dial up the bottom lane of the racetrack. Off turn two, onto the back straightaway, still under power. Denny Hamlin in hot pursuit of Regan Smith. Not going to be able to get him as Regan looks for checkers. Regan Smith had never led a lap at Dover until today, and today he's led 79, especially the most important one, the last one. He will win the Hisense 200. Second win of the season for Regan Smith, and this one has to be, I mean, the first one was a road course, and it was a very tough race. We talked earlier when we had him on the program about the bump and run that he uh, did in that race, but this time he holds off Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch, two pretty good racers, to get that victory. You mean Joe Gibbs didn't go to Dover and dominate? That didn't happen? No, it didn't. Apparently not, because Regan <sighs> took the trophy home. That's amazing. Uh, Kyle had a really good car. Through pitch strategy, Regan was able to get out front and showed – the field, the difference between a clean air car and a mm -hmm. dirty air car. Uh, is that still, I mean, I know you yes. got to have a good car, but is it still that dominant? Yeah, it really is. The uh, clean air is the key. Yep, clean air. Well, Kyle had a better car. When he got out front, he was able to pull away from the field. Mm -hmm. When Regan got out front, the 11 and 18 couldn't get close enough mm -hmm. to catch him, and that's the difference. These cars are becoming more aero-sensitive, unfortunately, in the Nationwide Car or Xfinity Series, uh, as the Cup cars are, because we have smart people working on them. Mm -hmm. If there's an advantage to be gained by making the aero portion of your car better, mm -hmm. you do that. Well, if you're relying on air to make it better, that means the result of taking air away is the car is worse. Wow. So it's that, it's that critical. But Regan Smith took off, uh, doesn't know what he's doing next year because they've announced uh, some sponsorship with Elliott Sadler going yep. over there. Regan Smith's career is still up and on. You know, we don't know what's going right. on with Regan. They want, it, they want to bring him back, but they need sponsorship. As, yeah. as all race teams do. We don't yeah, want to race an all-white all car or all-black car with the driver name on it. That doesn't mm -hmm. work out really. It's, not, it's bad for business. So he's driving for his career. He's driving his guts out. He was able to stay up front, save gas, stay in front of the 11 and the 18, who uh, thought they had the dominant car, but realistically they had the second and third place car yeah. at the end of the day. So Regan Smith, kudos to them. Uh, they move up to third in the points they, now. They move up to third. It's going to be really difficult uh, for them to get the points back that they lost earlier in the year. Uh, but the most intriguing thing about Dover is it was Dover. And the guy that went in there to win the race maybe didn't win the race. Regan Smith was kind of an underdog. And there we go. The Xfinity drivers getting in the way of these cup guys winning these races. Yeah, where's all the guys now who say, they got to outlaw these cup guys from running Xfinity races? No, the first thing that Regan does is he gets out and appreciates the fact that he beat two of them. Right. Beat one, two of the best. With For Danny. him, that's better. Absolutely right. Yeah. And uh, there were a lot of other good guys. Ryan Blaney's in that field. He won the pole. Kyle Larson in that race. Austin Dillon in there as well. Uh, and now the points battle, Chris Busher uses an eighth-place finish. He is now uh, leading the standings by 24 over Chase Elliott. Regan Smith pulls to within 36 of the lead in third. Ty Dillon is fourth, 39 points out of the lead. There you see the standings. But it's a lot to be said before we get to the end of this one. Now, like the, he's like the little engine that could, Chris Busher. He sure is. He's, he's all, hanging yeah, on right up there and absolutely. coming down the stretch. Doing with exactly a, what he needs that, to. That championship in sight. But now, here's what happens at the track. When, when you win a race, you go and do all the hat dance and all the interviews in victory lane the media is in the media center typically the crew chief comes in before the driver because yep. he still has some obligations to do some Taking people pictures, to talk to hat dance. pictures and all yep. that stuff comes into victory lane so we're at dover and someone comes in and sits down and starts saying that he's jason burdett he's introduced the really crew chief, right yeah, he's got his name plate in front of the guy and he sits down like we are with you the cameras would be the media center yep. this guy sits down in front of a microphone and starts answering questions yep. as if he is regan smith's crew chief jason burdett he's not nope not well, even close. About three questions in, they get wise to the guy and yep. say, uh, excuse me, sir, who are you? The guy, according to the Associated Press, after answering a couple of questions, says, uh, I'm Jordan, I'm a big NASCAR fan, and I'm glad, glad to, be to be here. Glad to be here. And then he fled. Yep. So now look at this. Here comes the real Jason Burdett afterwards, and this is what happened. And now we will be joined by Jason Burdett, the real Jason, the real Jason Burdett. He may need it back. <laughs> Jason? Yeah. 
I'll tell you what, can we check your ID if you yeah, can I see your card and identification, yeah. please? I wish you'd have been up there for the last 20 laps. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I didn't want to be up there. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure you didn't. Okay, so that was Jason Burdett, <laughs> the real Jason Burdett. Finally. But it kind of gives you an idea how crazy things can get. you got to love the enthusiasm of a fan and being able to actually have enough knowledge to answer a generic question the way he answered right, the right, question. Right. The Associated Press did the did the story on this. Yes. They asked him a question, and he said, we made a few adjustments, and that's what made the difference today. <laughs> I was nervous, he said, but the way we kept on driving, I thought we had a chance, and we just hung on for the rest of the race. And the only reason we knew he was there is he left? A beer. His beer. As, as Jason yeah, pointed out, exactly. he, said, hey, he left his beer there. So that was kind of yeah. cool from something that happened over the weekend. And, yeah, if you know, anybody, normally the security at the media center is tight <laughs> enough to where you can't do that. So if anybody knows who this guy is, please have him call us or text, tweet us. <laughs> tweet us and ask MRN. We want to talk to this guy because oh he's becoming a legend of unknown proportions. Absolutely he is. Hey, speaking of Twitter and questions, before we get on to On Track, Off Track, a couple of folks want to ask some questions. Dan McMichael says, does Jeff Gordon get a win in the final races or will he be shut out? What do you think? Just like we saw the intensity of Kevin Harvick showing up at Dover knowing he had to win Dover, we're going to see a race with Jeff Gordon somewhere, sometime between now and Homestead, that he understands he has to win a race. Mm -hmm. Whether he's still in the chase or not, He's going to pick a race, and those guys, him and Allen and Eddie DeHunt and all those engineers at Hendrick Motorsports are going to prepare a car like they've never prepared before mm -hmm. to get Jeff one more win. That would be a storybook ending for yes. him to get a victory in the chase yes. on his final season. Yes, and I believe, again, with the 88 being in there, the 48 still a dominant car. Mm -hmm. Casey's turning uh, his season back around even though he's missed the chase. The 24, I believe, will – relax, regroup, and get a win in the next seven races. He is one of the guys who moves on to the next round, uh, as we talked about a little bit earlier in the uh, the contender round. And as a matter of fact, Gordon will be the 10th seed moving forward. Denny Hamlin is the top seed. Then Matt Kenseth, Kevin Harvick, Carl Edwards, and Kyle Busch, the top five. Another Twitter question we have, uh, Russell Parker wants to know, do you think Penske can find the speed this week to get the win? We're looking forward to the mile and a halfs. Uh, we had a really good test at Kansas uh, just a couple weeks back, uh, and we've had really good luck at Charlotte with both teams and Team Penske as a whole, uh, even back when Kurt Busch was there. He's won Winston's and, and Coke 600s or, or Charlotte races. So we're very confident about our next two races with Charlotte and Kansas. Uh, we'd rather, just like Tim said earlier, we'd rather go to Talladega and not be put in that win yeah. or, or else position. Been there, um, so done that. Not it, too much oh, fun. It's, it is. It's a long. <laughs> Timmy said today when I talked to him, Fidua said, that was a long 400 laps. And I said, 400? I ran 1,000. <laughs> That's like, what it felt right? like. Yeah. Yes, it was a very long yeah. day. So I'd rather go through Charlotte and Kansas and be successful and not have to go to, to Talladega. But we will. We've done it once before. Yeah. But whatever it takes, our team picks up. But I believe we can get a win or show some dominance uh, at these next two mile and a halfs. All right. And one final Twitter question. Can two spotter up his game enough to get the car to victory lane? That one's for me. Sorry. Yeah. No, yeah There's only so much I can do. Uh, as Tim said, uh, as a spotter, you don't want to be the guy that hinders performance. There's yeah. very little we can do to drag that car to first, mm -hmm. but there's a lot we can do to drag it to 43rd. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to be dead weight. No. Uh, we've always said spotters, place kickers, and pilots all have the same job. You don't want them to talk about you. <laughs> and if that happens, it's been pretty successful. <laughs> exactly right. All right. Let's talk on track, off track now. A lot of stuff happened over the weekend. What about on track? What went well in your mind this weekend? Okay, in 2001, uh, we lost Dale Earnhardt. Before that, we had one voice that commanded the attention of NASCAR from a driver-owner mentality. Mm -hmm. And it was very obvious that he had not control, but he, he had the ear of NASCAR. Yeah. Once Dale Earnhardt left, nobody filled in that position. The voice went away. A few tried, but it may have yeah. got diluted. Exactly some. right. Yeah. NASCAR went towards a communistic, and I don't want to use that word derogatory, but it went towards a what NASCAR says goes and the garage has no say-so. Mm. We saw cars in 2007 that were built that there's not one team member, not one engineer, not one driver like them. Yeah. They were horrendous. They were involved or introduced as a level of safety standards. Right, we could which have, is understandable. I get it. Cool. We, went, we did go to a safer car. Now we've gotten rid of that. We now have a really good car. Well, it's evolved. He didn't get rid of the safety nope. elements that helped. Right, but we started taking input from outside sources, drivers, team owners, and outside engineers. Now as we move forward, we see something as simple as a restart line mm -hmm. being moved. It wasn't because NASCAR wanted it. It wasn't because the owners wanted it or some engineer. The drivers have been saying, 
give us a larger restart zone, mm-hmm. we'll give you better restarts. And NASCAR is listening at it. They're opening up their yeah. ears, more so understanding that the drivers and owners of today are more in tune to what's good for the sport, yep. whereas after Dale left, they may have been a little more selfish and only been able to say what's good for me. Right. Kudos to NASCAR for involving all of the educated masses of drivers, engineers, owners, and crew chiefs to make the sport better. Everybody's now on the same page and only works because the selfishness has kind of gone away mm-hmm. and NASCAR listens. They get good input, not selfish input, not what's good for the two car, right? right? It's what's good for the sport as we had. So we have the information coming now from a larger group that we had in 2001. One of the things that jumped out at me about Tony uh, Stewart's press conference last week where he said next year will be his last year is one of his answers had to do with the way things are, are progressing in the sport. And he touched on exactly what you said. He feels like the communication and the dialogue is as good as it has ever been. Yeah. And I think that's a, a critical thing moving forward. Yep. All right. For me on track, I've got elimination races. We've been talking about this all day. I love the way we have these moments now every third race uh, until we get the homestead where some guys know they're not going to move on without a great performance. I think that led to the drama we saw at the end between Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jamie McMurray. Yes. It leads to those moments like in the NCAA basketball tournament or a playoff football game where you know this is it. You've got it. There's no good points day. That doesn't work anymore. You know you've got to beat these guys in order to keep going. And like I say, your season's over, but you still have to show up for those next races, mm-hmm. and that's painful. You don't want to deal with that pain if you can pick up one more spot. Spot. Dale Jr. drove into the corner on the outside lane harder. He'd driven all day long. Mm-hmm. He knew he needed one more spot, and he got it. Absolutely, he did. Okay, what about off track? What wasn't so good? Why are we talking about safer barriers? We had a horrific wreck in Vegas. A horrific wreck in Vegas. I, we brought the driver home. He's injured. Austin Terry. It's 2015. Put safer barriers wherever a wall is, all the way around the inside and all the way around the outside. There's only two reasons we don't have safer barriers. It's because some gentleman behind a desk says, those cars aren't going to hit there and we don't need them, Mm -hmm. which we've proven wrong over and over again. It's like water. It will find the space to get through. Yeah, And they're expensive. We get it. Mm -hmm. But in order to have a race in the NASCAR series, when F1 went to Indy, they made Indy do a bunch of changes because the sanctioning body had guidelines. We need to increase the safety at every track that the big three series race on. And trickles down to smaller tracks. Yeah. If this gentleman that created the safer barrier was giving them away for free, mm-hmm. we'd have him everywhere. We'd have him in this office right here. We wouldn't be mm-hmm. banging our heads off the well, wall. I've seen you run into the wall out exactly there in Cuba right. It's not pretty. No. So we'd have safer barriers. Put safer barriers. we got to get rid of talking about he hit where a safer barrier wasn't. Or it, where no one has ever hit before. It's redundant. That. It's embarrassing. And, unfortunately, people are getting hurt, and we got to stop it. Kyle Busch, horrific wreck. Mm-hmm. Boom, Daytona fixed it. We've got to get safer barriers at these tracks. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. They need to be all over the place. All right, my off track is the late start time for the Camping World Truck Series after (laughs) 10.15 (laughs) Eastern time on a Saturday night. I understand it's a West Coast race, and for them it's only a little after 7 o'clock, but you're not getting any kind of an audience, I don't believe anyway, for a a 10.15, 10.19, whatever the green flag time was, start for that truck race on a Saturday night. That's, That's entirely too late. Man, I, I, I get it that you're trying to sell tickets and you're trying to accommodate those fans out there, but from their standpoint, you, it's not a typical work day. You've got all day to get out there on a Saturday. I, I just wish we would start those races a little bit early. Yeah, I'm willing to bet if you looked at the U.S. as a whole, the viewing audience for a truck series race would start about uh, just west of the Mississippi and work its way east. Uh, our limited viewing audience is on the West Coast. We know that. We've been struggling to try to get mm-hmm. Californians involved in NASCAR, and we're getting better at it. But a lot of our Midwest and East Coast audiences on TV, 10 o'clock is a really late start time. (laughs) Absolutely it is. Okay, that's on track, off track for this week. One more break here on Motorsports Monday. We'll hear from Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jamie McMurray after their great battle to see who was going to make the contender round when we come back. This is MRN Motorsports Monday. Dale Jr. here. I wear Wrangler Advanced Comfort Jeans for any occasion. With new styles and great fits, you'll look good and feel comfortable anytime, anywhere. Wrangler Advanced Comfort Jeans are built with a U-shaped construction, so they give you more room where you need it. And their four-way flex technology moves with you for all-day comfort. In the garage or out and about, Wrangler knows the ins and outs of comfort. Wrangler, real comfortable jeans. Whether you long to see the majestic Rocky Mountains, 
or the warm sandy beaches of Florida, get there in a Tom Johnson Camping World RV, the nation's number one rated RV dealer. Tom Johnson's service and selection are second to none with one of the largest inventories in the country. From pop-ups to motorhomes, check out the RV of your dreams wherever you are at TomJohnsonCamping.com or visit our locations by the Charlotte Motor Speedway and the Blue Ridge Mountains. Hey, I'm Martin Truex Jr. Now back to Joey Meyer and Woody Kane on Motorsports Monday. Joey Meyer, is that the Joey Meyer the spotter? Pilot? Joey Meyer, pilot spotter, is on the radio. You got, you guys We're actually, really wow, wow. Can you record this? Can you record this and be like, wow, Joey Meyer's on the radio. Unbelievable. My buddy. Wow. Wow. I love to hear him bust you. By the way, he had a little bit of an issue uh, getting through tech and <laughs> yeah. had to start at the back of the field. Yeah, had to fight his way back through. Those guys, again, one of the drivers that could not afford a bad finish. Mm -hmm. uh, Martin got up on the wheel and they drug that 78 back to where it belonged. Uh, finishing easily in the top 10 was, uh, where was he? Martin what? Truex Jr., as a matter of fact, uh, did not make it into the top 10 at the oh, end of the race. I was looking at fifth. He, he finished fi seated fifth now right. in the points. Right, seated fifth moving forward into yeah. the contender yeah. round. But yeah. he made it through uh, based on where he finished because he could have fallen out. Yeah, he could very yep. well have uh, uh, as well. Now let's talk a little bit about this great battle we had at the end here. Jamie McMurray comes out ahead of Dale Earnhardt Jr. on what we thought was going to be the final pit stop, has the position, making hay, going to be able to make it into the next round, and then a caution comes out and bunches the field back up. Jamie McMurray. Murray tied with Dale Earnhardt Jr. points-wise to advance. The tiebreaker was who finished better at Dover. Dale Earnhardt Jr. drove around the outside, got by Jamie, and beat him by one spot. Here's what Jamie told us after the race. Well, really uh, great effort by, by our whole team, our pit crew. Um, Matt and Josh did a, a really nice job adjusting on the car. Um, you know, we just we needed to run like those first two races, and unfortunately we didn't. We didn't really run horrible. We just didn't run as good as we needed to um, and then it just didn't line up right at the end with Kevin winning the 18 finishing second and Dale Jr. finishing third I mean like I honestly um, I thought if we could finish in the top five we would make it through to the next round um, just didn't expect uh, a fourth to not get us through. Jamie McMurray caught in the perfect storm. There you go Jamie McMurray just lost that spot the man who passed him Dale Earnhardt Jr. here's what he had to say. Nice to see that big smile. No, it's not a win, but boy, mission accomplished. Congratulations. Yeah, I knew we were a good enough team to get in there. We made uh, some mistakes together uh, last week in New Hampshire and put ourselves in a bad position, but I knew we were a good enough team to, to make it to the next round. I just you know, feel like our team's uh, a lot better than, than, than the guys we're competing with, and uh, you know, I just got that good confidence in my guys. They really, uh, they really support me and uh, pump me up and uh, give me the confidence to go out there and work hard. Um, we've been building this team for a long time. Real good day for us, and uh, the car did everything we needed. We kind of got lucky to start on the outside of that one restart and just kind of went around them somehow. I just drove it in there, and it stuck. And I hate uh, hate, I hate some guys don't get to make it, and, and some guys do, but I'm glad we're able to move on uh, to the next round. It kind of resets, and hopefully we don't make any more mistakes and make it too hard on ourselves to try to get to that next round. There you go, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jamie McMurray talking with our Alex Hayden. Eliminated Jimmy Johnson, Jamie McMurray, also Paul Menard, and, and then Boyer. Clint Boyer all eliminated. They hugged after the race. How That's, about that? That was the intensity and the, the friendship you saw and the emotion of, hey, I, you won, hey, I lost, but great race. They actually hugged uh, and were able to move on. A interesting thing goes, Jamie McMurray and Dale Earnhardt Jr. both very good at Charlotte Motor Speedway where we had this weekend. What can we expect for, teams, for Charlotte? Teams love coming to Charlotte. Uh, for the most part, it's their home track. Sleeping they in get, your own bed. They get to show off, bring more family. You'll see more family members at Charlotte. Flying Annie, going to Charlotte. All right. Typical uh, Charlotte deal. More family members, more you get to show off more. Uh, and it's a good mile-and-a-half track that widens out mm -hmm. that we get to race at night. It's the only official night race in the chase. Uh, very, very fast. We look forward to it from a Team Penske standpoint uh, and all the race teams. Man, it's the intensity there because you understand you have to get a win early or not have issues. And what a relief uh, feeling it is to get that win early in one of the segments and then knowing you don't have that pressure. Yeah, it's a big deal. We did it last year in Chicago, and uh, obviously we didn't do it this year. We, needed, we need to have a win here pretty soon. All right. Thanks for playing along with us on Motorsports Monday today. Keep doing it all week long on Twitter at MRN Radio. Mine is at WI Kane. Joey's is at Two Spotter. Use that hashtag AskMRN. And we will see you all right back here next Monday on Motorsports Monday. You've been listening to MRN Motorsports Monday.
Tune in again next Monday at noon for all the latest news, results, and interviews from NASCAR on MotorRacingNetwork.com. MRN Motorsports Monday is also available on demand at the MotorRacingNetwork.com Media Center or download it from iTunes or Stitcher. MRN Motorsports Monday is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.